Hello, welcome to the lawful world of business law. In this session, you will learn about the fundamentals of business law and the nature of contract. You will also have a clear idea of the scope of business law and the law of contract. Let us start with a simple question. What is the relevance of business law? Well, all of us know that freedom is the birthright of every human being. He derives the maximum satisfaction in it. It is normally said your freedom ends at the tip of the nose of another person. Human beings have to surrender part of their freedom to the society for which the society ensures safety, security and peace. Society refers to community or a group of persons and law refers to a body of rules that are used for regulating the conduct of the members of a society. The law of contracts forms the oldest branch of the law relating to business transactions. It affects every person in one way or the other. As all of us enter into some kind of contract every day, the law of contracts applies not only to the business community but also to others. Let us see an example in regular life. Today, I send my car to the mechanic for repairs. In this example, knowingly or unknowingly, I am entering into a contract. These contracts create legal rights and obligations. In short, all legally enforceable promises are contracts. Now, let us proceed to see the contents of Indian Contract Act. The law relating to contracts in India is stated in the Indian Contract Act 1872. The Indian Contract Act is divided into two parts, section 1 to 75 dealing with the general principles of the law of contract. Section 124 to 238 dealing with the special types of contracts such as contract of indemnity and guarantee, contract of bailment and pledge, contract of agency. As a clear understanding of the nature of the contract is a must for every student of business law, let us have a closer view of the nature of the contract. The law of contract is different from other branches of law. It does not lay down any rights and duties that the law will enforce. It contains the limiting principles on the basis of which the parties can create their own rights and duties which the law will uphold. The law of contract creates just in personam and not just in rum. Here, just in rum means the right against a thing at large and just in personum means the right against a specific person. Let us see what happened in the following illustration. Mr. A owes an amount of rupees 10,000 to Mr. B. Here, Mr. B has the right to recover this amount from Mr. A and only from Mr. A and not from anybody else. This right is known as just in personam. To understand the just in rum, let us see the following example. Mr. X owns 10 acres of land. Here, Mr. X is having the full liberty to enjoy the land against every member of the public. Likewise, every member of the public is having an obligation that they should not disturb the right of Mr. X. This right of Mr. X is known as just in rum. A clear understanding of the various definitions of a contract gives us an in-depth understanding of the topic. Let us now examine the various definitions of a contract. A contract is an agreement between two or more parties which can be enforced by law. The Indian Contract Act of 1872, Section 2H defines a contract as an agreement enforceable by law. If we analyze the above definition, we can understand that a contract consists of two elements, agreement, enforceability by law. 
let us see what is an agreement. According to Indian Contract Act section 2 e an agreement is defined as every promise and every set of promises forming consideration for each other, where a promise is when the person to whom the proposal is made signifies his assent thereto the proposal is said to be accepted. A proposal when accepted becomes a promise according to section 2 subsection b. An agreement constitutes offer and acceptance. The essence of every agreement is the meeting of the minds of the parties in full and final agreement. The parties to the agreement must have agreed about the subject matter of the agreement in the same sense and at the same time. This is known as consensus ad item or identity of minds. There can be no contract without consensus ad item. Let us see an example. A owns two horses, one is white and the other one brown. A wants to sell the brown horse to B. B thinks that he is going to purchase the white house. 